sinister stories. The quaint neighborhood of Briarwood Oaks thrived in a semblance of tranquility, lined with well-manicured lawns and picturesque houses. However, nestled in the heart of this seemingly idyllic community, a shadowy duo disrupted the harmony. Emma and Jacob, an unassuming couple, had fallen into a sinister routine, stealing packages from the unsuspecting residents of Briarwood Oaks. Under the guise of darkness, they prowled the neighborhood, their fingers nimble and hearts pounding with the thrill of their illicit exploits. Their living room became a clandestine warehouse, stacked with treasures ranging from gadgets to designer apparel. The couple reveled in their audacity, their sense of invincibility growing with each successful theft. Yet, in the grand scheme of their covert endeavors, a particular parcel caught their attention. In front of a big luxurious house, right at the front door. Wrapped in nondescript brown paper, it exuded an air of mystery that drew them in like moths to a flame. Ignoring the unspoken rule of sticking to low-profile targets, Emma and Jacob couldn't resist the allure of the enigmatic package. Little did they know that this choice would mark the beginning of their descent into a nightmare. As the couple celebrated their latest conquest behind closed doors, a soft knock echoed through the silence of their home. A chill swept through the room as they exchanged uneasy glances, the stolen package forgotten in the midst of their paranoia. The knocking persisted, growing more insistent with each passing moment. Summoning courage, Jacob approached the door cautiously, only to find a small, unmarked box waiting on the doorstep. A wave of relief washed over him as he retrieved it, assuming it to be another package being delivered. Although Emma explained that they were not expecting any packages. The moment he tore open the package, however, their lives were forever altered. Inside lay a series of photographs, capturing Emma and Jacob in the act of their illicit deeds. Panic set in as realization dawned upon them. They were being watched. A handwritten note accompanied the incriminating evidence, detailing the consequences of their actions and the consequences they would face. Fear gripped the couple's hearts as they attempted to piece together the identity of their mysterious adversary. In a desperate bid to maintain control, they continued their thieving escapades the next day, convinced that exposing their tormentor's identity would end the nightmare. Little did they know they were walking into a trap meticulously set by the one they had wronged. The malicious game escalated as the shadowy figure, armed with knowledge of their every move, began to toy with their sanity. The couple's once bold demeanor crumbled as paranoia and sleepless nights took their toll. One evening, returning from another ill-fated mission, Emma and Jacob found their home in disarray. Furniture overturned, photographs defaced and chilling messages scrawled across the walls greeted them. The intruder had invaded the sanctuary they had once taken for granted, leaving a chilling reminder that the hunter had become the hunted. As the psychological torment intensified, the couple's relationship strained under the weight of guilt and fear. They began to question their own motives, haunted by the consequences of their actions. The elusive adversary continued to manipulate their every move, a puppet master orchestrating a their own private play with Emma and Jacob as unwilling actors. The tormentor, the betrayed neighbor from their past, remained elusive, leaving Emma and Jacob in a perpetual state of unease. The couple's nights were haunted by unseen whispers, and the shadows within their home seemed to dance with malevolent intent. The lines between reality and paranoia blurred as they questioned every creak and rustle, wondering if their tormentor lurked in the corners of their own consciousness. Emma and Jacob, desperate to break free from the clutches of their tormentor, made the agonizing decision to cease their nocturnal escapades. The stolen packages became a distant memory, replaced by a fervent desire to rebuild their shattered bonds of trust with one another. Little did they know, their decision to abandon their illicit pursuits only intensified the psychological torment that plagued them. As the couple endeavored to lead a life of genuine atonement, the specter of their tormentor manifested in increasingly malevolent ways. The very fabric of their reality unraveled, and the once secure walls of their home seemed to close in on them. Whispers of accusation echoed through the halls, accusing them of sins they thought they had left behind. The tormentor, still veiled in anonymity, became a puppet master orchestrating a symphony of fear. Emma and Jacob's relationship strained under the relentless assault on their sanity. The tormentor remained elusive. 
His motives, a puzzle with missing pieces, fueled the couple's descent into a nightmarish reality. Sleep became a distant luxury, replaced by the haunting specters of their own guilt that materialized in the shadows of their home. The once invincible pair was reduced to a mere speck of their former selves, haunted by a past they couldn't escape. As the days unfolded into a disorienting blur, Emma and Jacob clung to the hope of normalcy that remained. They dared not speak of their nocturnal thefts, fearful that the admission would only deepen their predicament. The tormentor reveled in their isolation, orchestrating a sinister symphony that echoed through the hollow corridors of their once happy home. It started subtly, small items misplaced, familiar possessions vanishing without a trace. Emma would search desperately for her favorite earrings, only to find them missing. Jacob would question whether he had left his phone on the kitchen counter, only to discover it had vanished into thin air. The tormentor's sinister game of theft had escalated, a twisted reflection of the couple's own transgressions. The chilling climax, however, awaited them on an evening that dripped with an eerie silence. Emma and Jacob, returning home from a futile attempt at normalcy, were met with a sight that shattered the fragile facade of their existence. Their once cozy home stood barren, stripped of every sense of comfort and familiarity. The living room, once adorned with stolen treasures, now echoed with emptiness. Furniture, decorations, and even the mundane artifacts of daily life had vanished without a trace. Emma's heart pounded in her chest as she surveyed the room, a sinking realization settling over her like an insidious fog. The tormentor had escalated the psychological games. He was now robbing them of everything they held dear. A single note awaited them in the center of the empty room. It read, You once had more than you needed. Now you have nothing, nothing but shame. The words echoed with the venom of a vengeful specter, laying bare the consequence of their unchecked greed. The walls, stripped bare of any covering, stood as silent witnesses to their fall from grace. As Emma and Jacob stumbled through the desolate remnants of their home, another realization struck like a thunderclap. The tormentor had taken not only their possessions, but also the pictures that adorned their walls, snapshots of their illicit escapades, their faces twisted in the euphoria of stolen victories. These images, now plastered all over home, was also plastered all over town. The couple's misdeeds were out in the open for the world to witness. The impact of the revelation hit Emma and Jacob like a tidal wave. Shame coursed through their veins as they faced the consequences of their unchecked desires. With no possessions left to lose, Emma and Jacob stood at the crossroads of redemption and ruin. The tormentor's final act, a grand spectacle of retribution, left them with nothing but the echoes of their own guilt. The realization that they were powerless against the malevolent force that had orchestrated their downfall reverberated through the hollow halls of their existence. They were unable to call the police without exposing their own crimes. The couple faced a daunting choice. They could either succumb to the abyss of their own shame or attempt to rebuild their lives from the ruins of their past. As the photographs plastered all over town, whispered tales of deceit and downfall, Briarwood Oaks grappled with the aftermath of the stolen packages and the harrowing descent of Emma and Jacob. As they stood amidst the echoes of their shame, a sudden sharp rap on the door reverberated through the empty halls. Emma and Jacob exchanged a bewildered glance, uncertainty etched across their faces like a sinister mask. The unexpected intrusion shattered the fragile cocoon of isolation they had built around themselves. Reluctantly, Emma approached the door her hand trembling as she turned the doorknob. A cold gust of wind swept through the doorway, carrying with it the unmistakable scent of authority. Two police officers stood on the doorstep, stern expressions etched on their faces. In their hands, they held a collection of the photographs that had been plastered around town, vividly capturing Emma and Jacob's thieving escapades. We received reports from the community about these photographs, one of the officers spoke, holding up a snapshot of the couple mid-heist. The accusatory gaze in their eyes mirrored the judgment that radiated from the images. Mind explaining what's going on here? Caught in the spotlight of their own misdeeds, Emma and Jacob faced a dilemma. Their attempts at redemption, stripped away along with their possessions, now seemed futile in the face of the damning evidence held by the police. As the officers awaited an explanation, the couple hesitated, the weight of their crimes heavy on their shoulders. Confession would mean facing the legal consequences of their actions, 
while denial would only deepen the pit of deceit they had dug for themselves. The officers, unwavering in their scrutiny, awaited the couple's response. Finally, they had no choice but to confess their sins. It was the only way to rid themselves of their tormentor. Now for Emma and Jacob, a once adrenaline rush turned into confusion, then fear, then to regret and back fear, has taught them you never know who's watching because your transgressions can easily be held up for the world to see.